Hey guys, so we're back doing this part two of this. Today we're going to see if we can get the motor mounted onto the bike trainer. We've already done some testing, been able to spin it, get some voltage out of it, so all that's good. So now we're going to get it hooked up and we're going to see if we can get the axles from the motor and the bike trainer to connect up. And what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can put that 3D printer to good use and we're going to create a sleeve that will connect those two axles together. So let's get into it and see what kind of progress we can make today. Okay, so we have this to connect to here. So this side is just a fan and some magnets to add a little resistance. <clears throat> this side is just a flywheel. So what we're going to do, we're going to take this off. We're going to put a couple of nuts here. Then we're going to take our motor. We're going to mount it over here and line it up. So we got to get this thing off because we don't need this extra flywheel here. This I already had to break loose <clears throat> using a vise because that flywheel is on there and all of this stuff is reverse threads. So that has become a gigantic pain in the butt trying to find reverse threads for everything. So, flywheel off of the motor. So we've got our motor. We're going to take that, we're going to end up lining it up to mount right with the wheel. Now this is already aligned to match my bike, so I can mount my bike in here right now and the wheel will actually touch, so we know that this is actually going to be the proper lineup. So <clears throat> let's take this one off, and since this is already on a roller, there's a grub screw here we found just put the allen key in it and then so let's see here that's gonna yeah that's the right way so that's taking it off so now we could go this way and there we go all right now we got that off our motor here so we've got our two axles will line up pretty good so we're going to take a couple of nuts and put on here so there's one and two there and then we have some nice half inch nuts motor here all right so now we've got some parts that we can create a sleeve for so let's go create our sleeve and let's put that 3d printer to some good use
so here we go here's our sleeve it's been printed with 100 percent infill it's nice and solid and i'll slide on to that side and then over on that side put a little epoxy on there to hold it all together so we mount it up take our monkey up there we go so that sleeve i think will work because we are getting proper alignment so let's go ahead and epoxy that up look for those nuts and then we'll build the bracket to attach that using some elbow bracket So we have the motors hooked up, cylinders in place. I got a screwdriver here just to keep it from sliding around until we put the epoxy on it. Got the voltage meter here. And we do generate power. What's a little interesting is it doesn't seem to take much to get it to five volts just by turning the bike wheel. So let's see how much we get if we actually pedal it. that may actually be a problem without trying very hard we can get 30 volts out of that the circuit that I had intended to build for this that's gonna be way too much it's gonna mess up the circuit so we may have to put some safety features in that anything over 20 and it's gonna have to just flip a relay to keep us from blowing out our circuit so yeah it's gonna be interesting so, we made some progress today. Got everything hooked up, did some voltage testing, got it all uh, drilled up, everything's mounted. Had a little bit of a surprise with how much voltage we can actually generate on this thing. So this is gonna change a little bit for what we have to do with the circuitry. Right now, the circuit that I had intended to use for this can handle up to about 20 to 22 volts. Looks like we could easily get over that even with just a moderate pedaling. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna put, make some modifications to the design. I'm gonna add an additional relay in with maybe a buzzer or an LED or something that's gonna allow us that if we start hitting over that 20 volts, that it's gonna go ahead and it's going to shut off the relay to prevent us from over charging the batteries or dumping too much power into the circuit. Then that way we'll have an audible alert We'll have a visual alert that'll tell us, hey, you gotta back it down, you gotta change gears, you gotta do something. If this becomes a bigger problem, I may have to figure out a way to change the gear ratio on this or add some additional resistance so that we can't get up to that same speed as easily. I didn't expect this motor to be able to output you know, 30 volts at a moderate pace. 
just doing some different testing, I've been over to, able to get over 50 and 60 volts. So this is gonna be way more than what we had intended for this. Sorry, need my caffeine. Okay, so the next step is the big one. It's the electronics for all of this. This is gonna take probably two weeks to do, especially since I'm gonna be out of town for a couple of days over the next week. So next video might be two weeks, maybe three weeks out. So I'm gonna to have to do some work on the circuit. I'm gonna do some prototyping with it. I'm gonna see if this safety circuit is actually going to do what we need it to do. And in the meantime, I already talked to Anthony and I think we're gonna to try to blow up some small electronics with this generator. So there might be some extra video in there of hooking some LEDs or something to this thing and see if we can overvolt it and, you know, for reasons. So <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and finish this up. We're gonna move on to the next step. And as always, like, comment, subscribe. I do have a Patreon. Some of you guys have already taken advantage of that and that's much appreciated. That's allowing me to be able to do this a little bit more. It's allowing me to go and get some of the tools that I need for this and has been a huge help. So thank you guys and we'll see you on the next one.